All right, so I apologize in advance if my voice goes or I start speaking in tongues. I'm not feeling that great, so um, bear with me. Uh, but I'll try to give you guys a, a fun story. Um, thanks, for Elliot, for putting this together, and, um, and thanks for you guys for attending. Uh, I actually enjoy these talks because I get to talk about Synthago in a light that we normally don't talk about. Um, so Synthago is a company that specializes in CRISPR reagents um, for basically editing any type of cell. Um, but we have an interesting backstory in that we, and the, specifically the co-founders, didn't actually come from biology at all. They came from, essentially, they were computer engineers at SpaceX. Um, and so fast forward a few years, they decided that they didn't want to work um, for Elon anymore, and wanted to actually do something a little bit more meaningful than launch rockets out of space. And so they decided to apply the engineering approaches that they learned there um, to biology. And, and very much like Matt described, um, this is still what it looks like. This is modern times. Um, and it's unfortunate because you don't have the data capture, you don't have the provenance, you don't have the rigor and the reproducibility that you want. And, and so Synthago's goal is essentially to transform this into this. Um, and yes, unfortunately, this is still an artist's rendition, but um, our, our goal was to really transform the, the concept of biological research and transform it into an information science. And, and we feel that that is, is what's required to essentially unlock um, really a lot of the potential in biology and, and all the, the tools that we're building around it, like CRISPR, et cetera. And so you know, we thought about this for a bit, and we went back and said, okay, how do we actually do this? And you know, there, was, there was a lot of talk like cloud labs back in 2013, 2014, and like how do you build a cloud lab, or how do you build an Amazon for biology research? And so to answer this question, um, we actually thought this through, and we're like, okay, so to build AWS for biology, you don't start with AWS launching, you actually start with Amazon.com. And so you need to build a sustainable profit, or like revenue driving business or businesses to support the R&D and tech development to actually do this in a way that is scalable and that allows you to go after things that are just otherwise prohibitive. Even with the availability of capital in the valley, it's still, you need to have a sustainable model for this to actually work. And so that's kind of our conclusion. You need to build an Amazon.com first. And so we did. Um, in 2016, we launched uh, a, a website where you could go and buy synthetic RNA for CRISPR applications. Um, you could go in, design your sequences. We had design tools. You could buy it with a credit card, and it ships in five to seven days. Um, this year, we launched Engineered Cells, which is essentially a, um, we'll do the CRISPR work for you. You tell us which cell line you want to modify, you tell us which modifications you want to make, and you give us a credit card, four to six weeks later, it shows up on your doorstep. And, you know, this process was incredibly, you know, powerful for making these technologies accessible to researchers that currently didn't have access to it. Like, just making this um, simple and making it, basically taking all the cognitive overhead away um, really, really opened up CRISPR to a much wider customer base. Um, but so cool, that's great, that's for Amazon.com. But while we're doing this, like what we were doing is actually building behind the scenes um, a cloud lab, finger quotes. Um, and, and what that actually means is we were building something that can power not just this, but can be the foundation for much more powerful um, or much more complex uh, experiments, assays, techniques, et cetera. And so it's actually, we think we figured out a recipe for building cloud labs and what they, what they mean. And so step one, you start with a scalable platform. And this, this, by scalable platform, I mean something that isn't just, you know, like one research tech or like one piece of Hamilton automation. This is a, a platform with custom hardware designed specifically for your application or specifically for your scale that no one else can come close to. And so I'm actually going to skip ahead because I have a very favorite slide that I want to show. There's a secret that I'd like to show you. Um, we're actually a hardware company. And, and what I mean by that is that from the time that I joined the company um, four years ago, we've had CNC, milling, mechanical engineering, um, everything in-house to be able to rapidly prototype not just software and chemistry, but the hardware too. And so we've been able to build instrumentation that no one else has, that no one else has seen, and that no one else can compete with because they don't know the scales we're building it. Um, so that's what I mean by scalable platform. The next step is you need to operate that in an agile fashion. And so yes, I'm not gonna say agile exactly, but um, what it means is that you're able to do many different things on this platform in a generalizable way. Um, you're able to operate it in a very, very rapid um, iteration cycle, 
So again, having the ability to rapidly modify the hardware, the software, the chemistry to, to optimize processes or to identify workflows um, that are going to get you there a little bit quicker. Um, and then finally, you need to start extracting that information and building models around it. Um, and so we've done this. With the, the ability to make RNA, we've built models to predict how we're going to be able to make it better. We've been able to predict what impurities are present in every single compound we make. And then with cells, we're actually at the point now where we can predict what a CRISPR edit is going to do before we do it. And, and this is profound, especially on the, the genome editing side of things, where we can actually go through and say, I know this is going to work. I know this is going to be safe. I know this is going to repair this subset of diseases um, when we deliver it to these patients or um, do this editing type or this editing. And so um, th this, this whole concept, like these three um, pillars essentially, have a really given us a, a, a footing for how to continue to grow. And so as you can see, with the abstractions we want from molecules to cells, we can then go to function, like protein expression or transcriptomics. We can go to dynamic signaling and cell signaling and, and, and protein protein interactions. We can keep going up that stack. And, and what this looks like is it looks like a very, very fancy design, build, test, learn cycle. Um, and so what you see here is a very complicated slide that if I had a laser pointer, I could point to things. But um, going counter or going clockwise, starting in the top left, um, you essentially have the design process. The design process allows you to design either like which modifications you want to make, which cell state you want to end or you want to end up in, um, which CRISPR sequence you want. Um, you use that, you feed that into our factory. The factory makes the RNA, it performs the edits, it measures things along the way. Um, all the information gets passed into essentially the test. And so this is essentially our assay section where you either do sequencing or microscopy or proteomics. And, and capture all that information as well. And then the, the fun part is then when you take all this information, all this multimodal information, and feed it into a, a learn process, you can start to build models of, again, either like the, the RNA impurities or the CRISPR editing or you know, cell to cell state transitions. And, um, and this is when the platform becomes very powerful because if you can operate this cycle in a very, very, very fast, um, reliable way, you can generate data at a cost per sample that no one else can come close to. And, and that, that really is the power behind this platform, is that we know more about CRISPR than I think anyone else does because we have more data than anyone else has. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's a fun spot to be. But, you know, all of this happens kind of with, and I'm not going to show you the architecture diagrams, but I will give you this. Across that platform is, is AWS entirely. Um, uh, on, the, uh, on the design section, you have a lot of different tools um, one of the big things we found is that with design, when you're doing genomics, you, you want responsivity, you want interactivity with your design, and the way that you do that isn't just by, you know, throwing computer at it, it's throwing architectures at it. And this is where Lambda has really, really helped us um, do massively parallel compute against um, different genomes for off-target design, or off-target analyses and, and stuff like that. Um, and then at the same time, when you want to do these massive scales across entire populations of, um, of subjects like the, the F or the, um, the thousands genome project cohorts. Um, to do that in a cost effective manner means architecture, not compute. And, and so we've really learned a lot in, in developing these architectures over time and applying them to do different types of design uh, at different levels of interactivity. Um, throughout the entire factory, you have a bunch of really cool um, bits of tech for the logging, for the monitoring. Um, it's, it's very industry 4.0, um, but really it's just being able to have confidence in your infrastructure. Um, same thing on the, so or on the assay side. There's a lot of data coming in um, for every single sample. And then finally on the learning, um, just having access to compute. We haven't moved to SageMaker. We probably will. Um, but having access to that compute on the fly uh, has really been enabling us to move as quickly as we could. And so just to kind of give you a sense of like what we can do with this thing, um, I'm, we internally just don't refer to it as a cloud lab, but in, in some sense it is. So we can, make synth or we can make RNA from picograms to grams. Um, we can edit over 100 different types of cells. Uh, we can do a lot of edits. We can edit tens of thousands of different cells or different populations of cells and measure them, sequence them, understand them. And then, uh, okay. and then I think this is a gross understatement. I, I wanted to use the 12 and 12 as a shoehorn, but um, that's only a terabyte of data across the platform. These numbers are very conservative, but I'll say that, um, and we're not going to be at the same scale as Matt and 3Scan with regard to the image data, 
Um, but as we're moving and sequencing every single cell line that we're creating, um, we're, we're get, getting quickly into that space. So, um, but at the end of the day, what this really turns into is um, we want to be able to do virtualized experiments at scale. And so um, if you take the, the approach that we've seen with building a web interface and making it simple for someone to order cells, or order RNA, um, we want to be able to get to the point where someone can order an experiment, order a screen where they say, hey, I have this IPS line, I want this gene modified, I want to screen it against these three molecules, and I want to run this in you know, replicates of 1,000. Not going to be that, but take my, it's, yeah. We can do that. The, the thing is, you know, being able to make reproducible experiments is one thing. Being able to make reproducible experiments at scale is really hard unless you can design an entire platform with that in mind. And then, you know, great, so you've designed it. How do you support it? You build a sustainable model, and that's where the whole um, build the Amazon.com first uh, comes into mind, or comes into play. And so, yeah, um, that's what we're doing. Uh, if you're interested in being a part of it or have some really interesting applications that you want to try to run on it, uh, we are open to it. Um, we are growing rapidly, and uh, we just closed a, a, a big round um, last month, and, and we're looking at ways to spend it. So, yeah, um, cool. Thanks. <laughs>